Hey guys, welcome back. Well, today we're going to be talking about HDR photography, HDR or high dynamic range. Okay, so uh, what is it? How do you create it? And what do you use it for? Well, jump in and you'll find out. Here we go. Right guys, here we go. So HDR photography, HDR stands for high dynamic range. Okay, so what is that? Well, high dynamic range refers to the brightest bright in a photograph and the darkest dark. Okay, so the range from one to the other. Now the human eye can typically see a much higher range than a, a photo camera. Uh, but whenever you're taking a camera and you have too much light in a picture that will blow out detail Okay, and if you have too much dark that will do the same thing So basically what we do when we create an HDR photo is we compile a number of photos uh, from underexposed to overexposed and when we merge them together you will get the uh, details in the light and dark areas, okay? Now, HDR photography has been around for a long time and it is, for, in some cases, been completely overdone. Uh, some photographers even are kind of sick of it because everywhere you look, you see HDR. But that said, if you apply this technique to photographs where it is actually needed, it is a very important tool, okay? All right, so uh, one thing I want to explain before we jump in is this. Uh, what is the difference between HDR and HDRI? I'm explaining this because I have a, a 3D modeling channel as well, and the 3D artists use HDR images all the time. This is typically a spherical image that uh, provides light to a scene. Well, basically that is what this is as well. The only thing is that HDR photography is a flat image and HDRI, the ones that they work with, is a sphere but they both contain the same information, so that's what that is about, okay? All right, so in front of us, we see an underexposed uh, image, and you can see as a result, especially in the dark areas here, you are losing all detail. You can't even see whether it's wood or whatever, it's completely black, okay? Now, if we look at a, a overexposed uh, one, uh, and we look at the sky, for example, this is completely blown out. So. Even if there were clouds up here, we can't see them anymore because we lost all that detail as well. All right. Now, the next one we're going to look at is a typical HDR image. And if you look at this, you see that it has high saturation. It is very crisp, very clear. And you see a bunch of detail, both in the dark areas, for example, under the bridge here, uh, but in the light areas as well. All right. Now, uh, in many cases, like I mentioned, uh, people will, uh, you know, do the HDR effect just for the heck of it, where a photograph doesn't need it at all. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to take a number of photographs that I shot in a, a local harbor here, and we're going to compile those. Okay, so let's uh, jump into Lightroom. Here we go. Okay guys, here we are. Well, you can see that I shot six images right here. And what I basically did is I set my camera for proper exposure uh, as uh, you would normally do. And then what I did is I went a number of stops down. So I basically just went way too dark, which is this first one right here, this one. And then I went more towards normal exposure, making it slightly lighter, 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 overexposed and well overexposed, okay? So if you want to compile this into an HDR image, it's extremely easy. The only thing you have to do is go to edit and select all or drag like this, hang on. I think I already had them selected, there we go. Select all of them and we're gonna right click and we're gonna go to photo merge and click on HDR, okay? Now, as we do that, you can see it is uh, creating a preview. And you also have some options here where it says uh, Degost. I think it's uh, Dego. I don't know how you pronounce that. But basically what it's saying is if you have moving objects in your photographs uh, while you're doing this, for example, I took the picture in a harbor, maybe the boats were rocking a little bit on tiny waves or whatnot. You can correct that effect by selecting whether there is none, a little bit, medium, or high. Okay. Well, uh, that said, it's almost done. Let's give that another sec. All 
All right, so here is our uh, image and it's set to auto align and auto tone. I don't want the auto tone, so I'm gonna turn that off because I want to do my regular tweaking in uh, Lightroom. Uh, alignment's fine, I'm gonna leave all of this alone, so I'm gonna click on merge. And as I do that, what will happen is one additional, uh, you can see up here it's working, creating HDR. One additional image will be created and it will be put down here. We'll just give that a sec. All right, and there you have it. You can see that one additional image has been created, this one down here. And if we select this guy and we go to develop, we can tweak this image like we would normally do. And we'll simply go in and uh, I'll just uh, quickly run through this. I'll play with the temperature a little bit. The exposure, push that up. Uh, let's see, highlights. I want to see those details. And what you can actually do is, uh, hang on. Push that down a little and then bump up the clarity. And what you'll typically see here in an image like this is that the saturation and the vibrance is way, way up there, okay? So basically that is all there's to it, okay? So uh, if you enjoyed this video, please uh, hit that like button. Uh, if you wanna see more in the future, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. And that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.